Hey guys, hello and welcome back to another episode. So this morning I was sitting at my table eating breakfast and I looked out the front window into the front yard where we have a couple of hickory trees and I noticed that there were little bits and pieces of hickory shells falling out into the front yard. It almost looked like rain, which reminded me that it is August in Missouri and that it is my favorite time to get after squirrels in Missouri. They are so easy to hunt this time of year because you can find a hickory grove out of these conservation areas that we have around here. Um, and you can s just sit and listen, and you can hear, almost sounds like rain when you're out there. You can pick out the trees that have two or three squirrels in the top of them, make your way over to the base, and you can just sit there and pick them off one by one. Uh, usually you'll shoot, and you'll have to wait another five or ten minutes before they start chewing again, but eventually they'll give themselves away if you're patient. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It really gets me excited for the upcoming hunting season. we got waterfowl and deer and turkey fall turkey, that kind of stuff coming up in Missouri. August and September, I really start getting hunting fever bad, and I just had to get out and make a short video today. Man, there's just really something almost sacred about a break barrel 410 and squirrel hunting. I don't know if it's because that's what I grew up hunting, hunting them with, but I just love, it's a tradition for me to use a break barrel 410 for my first squirrel hunt of the season. Uh, just a really fun load to use. I use uh, three inch shells with high brass. I like six shot versus bird shot. I don't, I don't care so much for seven and a half shot. I know it works, but squirrels are really tough critters. I've seen them get hit with a, a hollow point 22, fall out of a treetop, get back up, run back up into the treetop and get into a hole. They are just super strong and tough critters to take down, really resilient animals. So that trip did not turn out as well as I'd hoped it would. That's actually the first time I've ever targeted squirrels at that particular conservation area. Um, I've done a lot of fishing in that area and stuff like that, but there are not a lot of hickory and oak trees I found out today, which in my experience means not a lot of squirrels. So what I'm gonna do is make this a two-part video. I'm headed to a different conservation area this time, pretty close to home, but uh, I know there's typically a lot more squirrels in this area, a lot more hickory and oak trees. Uh, it's just a better habitat for them, and their numbers have always been super healthy in this area. Um, I will not be using the brake barrel 410 today. Uh, luckily, I checked the area regulations since it's my first time going out this year. I looked them up online, and they do not allow lead shot anymore out there for shotguns. It has to be non-toxic. one down guys
Man, what a fun hunt and a good time that was. I've been coming out here to this area since I was a kid, and I still enjoy the squirrel hunting just as much as I did when I was 11 or 12 years old. I look forward to it every year, uh, August and September. Love it. A couple tips for you guys if you're watching the channel to try and get into hunting. Squirrel can be a really good first game to chase. A good gateway species to get you into the sport. All you need is uh, any any gauge shotgun really. I like to use a 410, but I have friends who use 20s and 12s. Uh, or you could use a 22 or a 17. Something small caliber or small gauge. Uh, go out to a place that has lots of hickory or oak trees. And if you just sit down and wait, you will see squirrels. What I think I'm going to do is, when I get back to the truck, I like to clean my game in the parking lot. So I don't have to mess with it at home. And I'm sure the wildlife appreciate the scraps. I'm going to uh, give you guys a little demonstration on how I clean squirrels. And then later on at home, I will cook some for you. So hang tight. All right, back to the parking lot. Uh, what you guys missed out on is while I was walking back, I got one more opportunity to shoot, and I got a fifth squirrel. I thought I had the camera turned on, but I was wrong. The camera was not on, and didn't get that footage, but hopefully I got pretty decent footage of the other four. Uh, we'll see here in a bit, I guess. Uh, anyways, I'll go ahead and show you how I clean these things. Um, I bring some tools with me when I go so I can do it in the parking lot. Uh, fillet knife, some kitchen shears, and a bottle of tap water so I can wash my hands when I'm done and drive home. Luckily, all but one or two of my squirrels were pretty young. Those are my favorite to eat because they're the most tender and uh, not quite as chewy as the older ones. So what I do when I start, take my fillet knife, grab a little piece of back hair like this, and I just make a little incision right here about mid back and get your finger under the front half and under the back half and that just pulls off like a pair of pants now the reason I bring my kitchen shears so when I break the leg like that I can cut right through the tendon tail off bottom half's done finger under there where his elbow is under the skin and between the meat and that just pulls right off like that Those are shears up here they have a little I don't know if you can see that but they have a little gland or something there that always has a few hairs sticking out of it so when I cut this off I try and cut below that like that This guy took a hollow point 22 to the forearm, so I think I'm going to cut him off right there at the elbow so I don't have all those bone fragments in the meat. Get it down to the neck, and you can take these, and they just go right through the neck. The head off. Okay, now we need to get the guts out. all the way up through the ribs you can get in there and you can grab onto the trachea and then they should just be able to rip the diaphragm all the guts out in one pull should doesn't always work just like that then they have a little bit of uh, belly 
belly meat here that I really don't like. So I cut that out. Get rid of that. Nobody wants that. All right, now one thing I do that I don't know if a lot of other people do or not, but I've always done it this way. A few little pieces hanging on here. I take these kitchen shears, and I like to quarter this thing out so that when I barbecue it or fry it or whatever I do, make gravy with it, I have little quarters, kind of like a deer but on a much smaller scale. So I cut through there. Get a nice leg, little drumstick type deal. Cut right through there. Same kind of deal. Then the, uh, this is a really young small squirrel. So he's not very big, but on the bigger squirrels, this is my favorite piece right here. It would be the back strap. Uh, it runs down both sides of the spine there. There's a line of meat there and a line of meat there. That's my favorite part of the squirrel. Not very impressive on this little guy, but uh, if you get a big fox squirrel, they're pretty significant. Then on the upper quarters, I already have the front cut in half. So now I will just go up the spine right here. I try and get it right up the middle of it, but sometimes it slips off to one side or the other. And you got your top quarters. I cook it with the ribs and everything on. There's a little bit of meat here on the ribs. That is ready to go in a plastic bag and uh, get rinsed off and soaked in water when I get home. Mm -hmm.